Hello and welcome to Bike Social. I'm Michael Mann and I'm here in Austria at a test facility that KTM used to develop their motorcycles. Now, that's not necessarily just development about the engine, the chassis, suspension, brakes and so on. It's development of the technology that's packed into these motorcycles, specifically with the two bikes I'm here with now, that's the 1290 Super Adventure S and the uh, most recent 790 Duke, uh, new for 2018. Now, 20 odd years ago, even 10 years ago, motorcycle technology had uh, embraced um, plenty of acronyms already, especially with traction control and ABS among them. And all the manufacturers, it's fair to say, have advanced that and they're taking on um, a lot of new technology and using more acronyms to make riding much more safer and uh, much protecting the rider too. Now, we've been invited here by KTM uh, today to learn a little bit more about a lot of the functionality and technology that goes on in these particular motorcycles. Um, it really is the latest technology. We've had a little insight into the future as well. A couple of years away, there's gonna be um, some technology that you can already see in cars about um, when you're following a car or a vehicle in front, you can set cruise control, so it'll, set, it'll stay within a certain range, for example. Now, what we've learned here today uh, includes um, hill hole control. We've learned um, cornering ABS, which is uh, astonishing, uh, launch control. And uh, here's a little look at just what we've been doing today. Uh, well, joining me now is Luke Brackenbury, who's the PR manager for KTM Street Bike Range. Luke, welcome. Thanks for joining me. Um, well, thanks very much for inviting us here as well to learn a bit more about what goes on. But tell me, what is KTM's philosophy behind all this like, advancement in technology? Well, Michael, it's pretty simple. It's features that help riders control their bikes without losing the joy of riding. And KTM is a riders' company. We want to, you know, we buy, you know, build the bikes we want to ride. We want to have fun riding them. So, if we're going to add these sort of electronic rider aids, they they can't detract from the riding fun. They've got to add to it somehow. So. You know, we're a sort of company that comes up with supermoto ABS and things like that. So that's our philosophy. Yeah, it's got to it's got to add to it. We're a dynamic company, ready to race. This this whole attitude. So that's how we approach the uh, safety systems. Perfect. We've done a, we've done a lot today. We've we've been uh, we've witnessed you giving some demos. We've been able to test uh, these great bikes and their and the range of uh, technology behind them or in 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 them, both on and off road. Even. Um, the mid cornering, the, the cornering ABS was one that fascinated me the most. What, how does it work? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I need a lot more intelligent person to answer that. But yeah, it's obviously uh, an ABS system that allows you to, to remain committed to your corner trajectory. You know, obviously, it's built within us that if we're in that panic situation that we we break, we we stand the bike up, and and sometimes you're in a situation if you stand the bike up that you may be faced with an obstacle, uh, which isn't good. So the cornering ABS system on the on quite a range of our bikes now allows you to maintain that trajectory you can pull the brakes on as hard as you want which as you found out today <laughs> to go against your instinct to, to make yourself do that and the system can do it uh, and on the um, you know on the the 1290 super adventures it's modulating uh, it knows how lent over you are it's you know, giving you the amount of pressure it you know it knows it can give you and you can stand the bike up then if you need to and it applies more and it's modulating between the front and the rear brake on the 790 Duke that you tried, it's uh, it's just working with the front system. Again, it knows how far you're lent over. It's giving you as much pressure as the the tire can handle, and to try and maintain that trajectory. And then you can stand it up if you need to to to, to keep that you know, trajectory if there's space and giving you more more power. So it's yeah, it's like you found out. It's an amazing system. You know, you once you 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 know it's there and you can trust it. You know, you spoke to some of our guys. They've used it for real on the road. They didn't plan to mm. use it, but it's an incredible system so um, you know it's just putting motorcycle safety again to that that next level we're not saying hey go and use this system every corner you go and ride because it's there but you know you know that should a situation like that happen you can pull on the brakes as hard as you dare and the and the bike's gonna gonna look after you yeah absolutely right it was difficult to get your head around it initially but once you build that trust it's uh, it's there to protect you ultimately uh, and what else have we learned today we've learned about launch control on the 790 particularly yeah launch control was a, a system that we we bought in last year with the the 2.0 version of the 1290 super duke car uh, especially on a bike like that with so much uh, horsepower and performance that it's a way of getting off the line um in a quick way and you know it basically you hold the throttle open and the bike is set at maximum or peak torque really uh, and you feed the power out with a clutch you don't have to modulate the throttle the bike's doing that it's keeping the front wheel down to give you a, a, a clean mm. a clean getaway a race start 
and maybe you want to do that in the traffic lights as well. So <laughs> we were able to bring that sort of suite elect of electronics that we have on the Super Duke car to the 790 Duke. So we've got that on there. So um, again, it's yeah, the system can do three runs in a row. It's a lot of fun. It gives you the the optimum start, fast start that you you want to make. Mm. What else have we done? We've done um, suspension settings on the 1290 was quite yeah, interesting too. Yeah, so semi-active, you know, we'd, we're, uh, which we have on the 1290 Super Duke GT and the 1290 Super Adventure S. You know, it's it's reacting to the road. You know, we've put this on our bikes that people will tour on our travel enduros, our sports tourer, because it gives you you know such option at the push of a button. So if you've got a partner on the back with the luggage or you're you're on the long road where it's not particularly the most fun to drive but you, you want to be comfortable you've got that and then when the road opens up it's twisty push of a button you can set the damp in and you can ride a bit harder put it on sport and what you found again like on the comfort mode with the you know the anti-dive anti keeping the bike level and then obviously put it on sport the bike will pitch more to again to put more um, heat into tires give you more grip um, and as we explained you know the two different kind of mentalities to these approaches about more sporty you want the wheels and in contact with the ground at all times and the rider maybe moves around when it's comfortable you want the rider staying still with the pillions they're not banging around and and then you're sacrificing a little bit of grip so it's about just showing how quick you could adjust that so you don't have to stop and adjust the spanners again you've got the electronic preload set it for your your luggage for your passenger and just to give you an idea of how that changes and how the dynamic of the bike changes very quickly very easily and we moved on to the off-road section, or a small off-road section, yeah. uh, gravel, a gravel-based uh, uh, demonstration of how both um, traction control and ABS work. Yeah, it was a pretty extreme way. I mean, obviously, um, we've got bikes like the 1290 Super Adventure R, and a lot of performance. You know, it's a, it's, it's not a, you know, it's, it's a very capable bike. But there are maybe some riders who buy the bike, and they're not the most confident off-road riders, but they, they know with these systems that they can, they can get the power down. You know, 160 horsepower with no traction control it's just spinning and it's not really going anywhere and it's digging a hole and it's as you you know you got a bit of a sweat on control in that <laughs> put the off-road traction control on the off-road mode and it still spins so you can slide and make drifts but it's it's finding grip as well so you can actually yeah go forward rather than just make a big spin and then the off-road abs you know it was again to show that how that differs from the, the street system so it's it, you know on that loose gravel yeah i said go and, you know you saw me i broke as hard as i could you braked as hard as you could and you know, it sort of digs in, it finds the grip by slipping a little yeah. and then comes to a complete stop, but you can still block the rear and, and skid. So again, a demonstration to show you how, the, the, you know, the, how these systems work in quite extreme, extreme ways. Uh, and then we moved on to hill hold control and then yeah. also um, the traction control using a very, very slippery surface uphill. Yeah, hill hold control, you know, it's um, for someone like me who's got very, very short legs on like these adventure bikes, you know, you come to a stop on an incline and then you you know you could do that thing where you put it in gear and put the back brake on and, and get ready to set off and, and you sort of do that dancing around heel hold control you know when you come to a stop the bike detects you on a slope it applies the rear brake holds it on for just over three seconds meaning that you can be quite settled you know as we demonstrated you can take your hand off the brakes uh, brake levers and it holds you there and then you just pull away and it slowly disengages the rear if you're staying there longer on the slope it you know you can reapply it with mm. the brake mm. um again it's just like you know i'm sure plenty of bikes get dropped from silly situations yeah. like that and it's with the the lean angle sensitivity with the gyroscopes we're able to to add that function it's it's it safety yeah i suppose people drop bikes and damage them which is really annoying i dropped a bike last year in a stupid silly way you know it's to help prevent that sort of thing and again so maybe riders can be more comfortable when it comes to a, coming to a stop with the luggage and the passenger. It's a bit like the um, automatic turn indicator reset system. Yeah, you know, it's yeah. it cuts the indicators off. And you know, does that save lives? Probably because you know what it's like. Sometimes you leave the indicators on, and maybe a car thinks you're going to turn into a junction and pulls out. So it's about coming up with systems that you know, may, be it quite simple, they can make a difference. But so yeah, we went onto that hill. So um, the hill was really really slippery tarmac that I've been telling you not to ride on all day then I said we're going to go ride on that and that was to show uh, the ride modes the different uh, levels of the traction control so before the first time we did it on the Super Adventure uh, S no traction control 160 horsepower like on ice it's just spinning and you're barely going up the hill and then we we tried rain mode and sport and street and you could see how the traction control was finding grip um, on that really slippery surface without kind of 
juddering and cutting in and even when you left the slippery surface onto the grippy stuff it didn't jolt or anything it, yeah so that was a kind of extreme demonstration to show how the traction control intervenes in those different modes the different power the different delivery mm. yeah, it's fascinating you've got a, a, a whole great handful of rpm and torque and you're trying to lay it all down with on rain mode the tire barely slipped a, a quarter of a turn no. if that and then you've got the, the throttle at absolutely Full maximum pin, and, it's, yeah, it's and it's, up just, there, yeah. it's just cruising on up there dead easy yeah. look luke thanks very much for your time it's been a fascinating day and and who knows what the future holds well you know what the future holds yeah, especially course, with ktm but, but you, you probably can't tell me about <laughs> that for now um well we've witnessed a couple of different things that are coming up in the future um but you know what how, who knows what's, what the next 10 or even 20 years are going to hold uh you can read more uh, about more about the detail of what we've done today at bikesocial.co.uk